This is the enemy, an enemy no longer to be feared, an impotent enemy whose fighting days are over, prisoners of war who by their capture have been transformed from instruments of destruction into one of the most valuable sources of intelligence. Each of these prisoners is a potential mine of information about the enemy. True, under international law, all a prisoner of war is required to reveal is his name, rank, and serial number. But the cases where this information alone is forthcoming are the exception rather than the rule. Of course, enemy airmen are not captured in this quantity. But like other prisoners, they can be made to talk, not by violence, but through a technique of interrogation carried on by a group of specialists, air interrogation officers. However, one thing must be remembered. These men were individuals before they became regimented soldiers. All they look like now are just prisoners. But this man may have been a scientist, a teacher, a writer, a philosopher, a politician, a businessman just as this man was an officer in the German army during the last war, a magazine writer of Italian-American parentage, a former missionary in Japan, a reporter on an American newspaper in Tokyo, a singer who studied in Italy, a teacher of German literature. Most of the others seated in this classroom beginning their education in prisoner of war interrogation are lawyers or business executives. A good interrogator must have four essentials memory, tact, a wide military knowledge, and a fluency in one or more enemy languages. Only with this equipment can he carry on in the mental clash of prisoner against interrogator. Well, now that we've tabbed them, let's teach them. Prisoner of war interrogation, gentlemen, is one of the most important functions of intelligence. In PWI, the sole purpose of your examination of personnel, documents, or materiel is to provide information about the enemy to the high command and to all tactical units concerned with a maximum of completeness, accuracy, and speed. Now, conversely, the High Command should keep you informed of all recent developments in the enemy's organizations, equipment, plans, and activities. In Germany, there are several distinct peoples. It's important to know their various dialects, customs, habits, and religious and social conditions. The more you know about your prisoner's background, the better you'll be able to deal with it. While these men concentrate on German history, economics, military language, politics, organization of the Luftwaffe, and so forth, other students are being taught the same things in relation to Italy and Japan. Once you start to become an air interrogation officer, you're in for a lifelong education crowded into just a few weeks. And that's the Savoia Marchetti SM-79 bomber and reconnaissance, powered by three 750-horsepower radials, top speed 295 miles per hour. Yes, they have to learn their aircraft, too. They never know when the crew of an SM-79 may drop in on them socially. Prisoners immediately after capture should be segregated in groups of officers, non-commissioned officers, and privates. They should also be isolated as individuals until they're interrogated to keep them from conversing with one another or with their captors. Yes. What about feeding them? That's out. No food, drink, or cigarettes until later. It's all part of the softening up process. How soon should the interrogation take place, Captain? Say, after a plane crash. The sooner the better. Doesn't a non-com sometimes question a prisoner before he's interrogated? Yes, but only routine questions about name, rank, and serial number. Answers to which he passes on promptly to the AIO. Now, as soon as a prisoner is captured, his belongings should be taken away from him and turned over promptly to the AIO for thorough examination. The Japanese soldier is swaggering, self-confident, fanatically devoted to duty, and eager to achieve an honored place among Japan's heroes. Being a prisoner is the worst possible disgrace that can befall. When a Jap is captured, his commander orders a box of ashes sent to his family. As far as they're concerned, he's dead. Yes? You mean his wife can remarry? Legally, and instantly, if she's in the mood. The emblem of the Air Force. The silver braid with two pips of yellow metal show he's a captain. The silver eagle and gold wreath show he's a pilot observer. The short wreath with three wings also show that he's a captain. The ground forces who capture air prisoners must turn them over immediately to the AIO for the first interrogation. 
After that, they can be interrogated and turned by the ground forces. Just as ground force prisoners, especially those who are attached to aerodromes or have any connection with the enemy air forces, should have a second interrogation by the AIO. Are there any questions? Yes. Major, should you take notes during an interrogation? No. And there are no exceptions to that rule. Put your notes down on paper right after you're through with it. Yes? What happens when an AIL who knows only German comes up against an Italian prisoner? Doesn't he have to use an interpreter? Interpreters are to be used only as a last resort. It's never as effective as seeing your prisoner alone. Now make your interrogation as casual as possible. Try to make the prisoner feel that you're his friend. The first one he's met since his capture. Frequently, during their course, these future AIOs hold practice interrogations, with one student as interrogator, another as prisoner. And have you ever had any Spanish wine, Tenente? Ah, yes, several times. <laughs> and very good, too, I must say. Uh, do you like it better than Italian wine? Oh, I don't like any wine. Oh, a cigarette? I don't smoke. Have you ever been to Spain, Tenente? No. Well, uh, are you interested in Spain? Do you ever think you might go there after the war? How should I know that? Well, uh, maybe you might be even thinking of going there during the war, huh? Why did you have the Spanish dictionary in your plane? Just improving my mind. Who do you think you're fooling, Tenente? Your name's right there on the cover. Why were you flying back to Spain? How could I go back if I've never been there? You must not lie to me. I only tell the truth. Now, don't try to give me that routine. Time. Time, gentlemen. We'll stop there. I'm going to ask for criticisms. Any volunteers? Yes, Lieutenant? It's not good to lose your temper that way, especially with such a dumb, good-natured type. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Jones, uh, what is your criticism of the interrogation? I think you press too hard for certain information. That always tips the prisoner off that what you want is important. Excellent. Of course, as in practically everything that has to do with PWI, there's an exception to every rule except one. And that is, bait your hook to suit your fish. In other words, use your own common sense. On that excellent piece of advice, let's leave the classroom and go into the various theaters of war where we will see how actual air interrogation officers put into practice the education they receive. Captain Schwartz from Lieutenant Hall in the field. Captain Schwartz, 73, AIO. JU-88 brought down by any aircraft. Crew of four, one man killed. I'll send material right over to look at the plane. Get the three of them up here as fast as you can. Right. These are the personal belongings of the three prisoners, taken from them in the field and sent on up ahead to intelligence. They are kept separately just as each one of the prisoners is kept separately, without food, cigarettes, or conversation, until he's turned over to the interrogation officer. In case you're an autograph hunter, this citation for bravery is signed by none other than Field Marshal Hermann Goering. Oberleutnant Vedler must have been mighty proud of it to be carrying it into action. They found it in the lining of the sergeant's coat. What is it, sir? It's a theater ticket stub. Folks Theater, 17th of June, from Stamp Parish of Hof. That means he bought it from the concierge in the hotel in Munich. How can you tell, sir? Spent two years in Munich. Let's see, Hans Radl, Master Sergeant, Munich, Bavarian. He's a co-pilot, sir, 76th Bomber Wing. Co-pilot? They must be running out of officers. That's our latest top on uh, KG-76. Right here, sir. Commanding officer, Oberstleutnant Crew. Noble Lieutenant Vedler of the 76 was knocked down by a Spitfire last April. Hmm. Same name as the lieutenant who was piloting this plane. Our man seems to have quite a record. Comes from Berlin, spent some time in Poland last year. Distinguished by his brutal treatment of the Poles. I think I'll start on Hans Radler first. He seems uh, most promising. I know something about those new Heinkel 177s. Besides, he's Bavarian. His lieutenant is uh, Prussian. Maybe have them send Radel in. You get on the dictaphone. I did look. No, I felt they will shout it as if Pech you hopped out. It's kind of schlimmer to raise inside. Sustency sake, Frau Bregel. 
Ich stehe lieber. Na, Feldwebel, wir respektieren die Ausbildung Ihrer Luftwaffe. Besonders Kampfgeschwader 76. Wie ich höre, ist Ihr Kommandeur Krug einer der Besten. Ruhen Sie sich doch aus, Sie haben es verdient. Danke, Herr Hoffmann. Ihre Familie in München wird froh sein, dass Sie außer Gefahr sind. Werden die das erfahren? Ich persönlich werde das erledigen. Sagen Sie mal, Herr Weber, spielt der Willi Schmidt immer noch im Volkstheater? Ja, wieso weiß denn der Amerikaner was von Willi Schmidt? Das ist nicht so merkwürdig, ich habe ihn oft gesehen. Und wie geht es dem äh, Herrn Ecker bei der Bayerischen Hofbar? Macht er immer noch dieses, ach, äh, ein Portion Wodka, ein Portion Curacao? <lacht> ach, Sie meinen Bayerischen Hofcocktail? <lacht> Ich habe sechs davon getrunken, als ich im Juni zu Hause war. <lacht> Sie können aber mehr vertragen als ich. Und hatten Sie genug Urlaub, sich davon zu erholen? Ja, ich war unterwegs zum neuen Verband. Da gab es drei Tage Urlaub. Auf dem Weg von Russland? Das habe ich nicht gesagt. Natürlich nicht. Ich äh, glaube, nur eines Ihrer Ohren sei erfroren. Beruhigen Sie sich, Feldwebel. Hier gibt es keine Gestapo. Und Ihr Oberleutnant Wedler kann sie auch nicht hören. Da brauchen Sie keine Sorgen zu machen. Um den kümmere ich mich nicht. So? Da kann ich jetzt nicht mehr schikanieren. Diese preußische Großschnauze. Er hat dann selben Eindruck auf mich gemacht. Er hat fürchterlich mit seinen helden Taten bei Stalingrad gebraten. Ach, Unsinn, der war er gar nicht mal dabei. Wir haben ein Junges 52 geflogen, einen Transporter. Äh, nicht so aufregend wie der äh, Heinkel, was? <lacht> Nein. Doch, das... Ich weiß überhaupt nichts von einem neuen Heinkel 177. Aber hören Sie mal, Feldwebel, ich verlange nicht, dass Sie militärische Geheimnisse verraten. Wir wissen schon von einem neuen Heinkel. Vielleicht mehr als Sie selber. Das glaube ich nicht. Sie haben ja keinen geflogen wie ich. Ist das wirklich so gut? Wunderbar. Ich habe einen von Rouen nach Paris geflogen, im letzten Monat, in weniger wie 30 Minuten. Jetzt so, the interrogation goes on. And very successfully, too, thanks to Captain Schwartz's training and common sense. You noticed how he won the prisoner's gratitude by promising to inform his family of his safety, how he established immediate contact through mutual interest in the Munich theater, how he played on the Bavarian's prejudice against his Prussian lieutenant, and how he pretended that he'd already seen Lieutenant Wedler and gotten information from him, how he pretended to know more about the new Heinkel 177s than the sergeant, thereby piquing his vanity and causing him to talk. As a result, he is now in possession of valuable information. He knows the KG-76 has been moved from Russia, that the sergeant has flown a new Heinkel 177, that they are probably based at Rouen. If Captain Schwartz thinks any information is sufficiently urgent, he will send a flash to headquarters. Then he's ready for the next prisoner. Corporal Schloss. Stillstand! Was ist mit Ihnen los? Draußen kommen Sie rein wie ein Soldat. Marsch, Marsch! Hi, Hitler. Das ist besser. Rührt euch. Wie Sie wollen, Unteroffizier. Mein Name ist Schloss. Ich bin Unteroffizier. 1464 ist meine Nummer. Das interessiert mich nicht. Schweigen Sie, bis Sie gefragt werden. Wenn Sie sich anständig benehmen, so werden Sie anständig behandelt. Wenn nicht, mein Name Maul. Sie wissen ja, dass wir Ihnen gewisse Vorrechte erlauben oder Sie in Einzelhaft bringen können. Mein Name ist... Gut. Put this prisoner by himself for a while. Yes, sir. Marsch! No soap that time, but that's all part of the game. Captain Schwartz very wisely realized that he had a tough nut to crack, so in order not to waste valuable time, he put him aside. A couple of days may make him a lot more pliable. In the meantime, there's... Wait a minute. Why is our AIO putting on wings? Another trick of the trade. He's about to interrogate a flying officer, so it helps break the ice if he can talk as one flyer to another. Let's see how that works with Oberleutnant Wedler. Wie geht's Ihnen, Herr Oberleutnant? 
Sie haben Ihre Maschine ganz geschickt abgesetzt, dass Sie bloß einen Mann verloren haben. Danke sehr. Nehmen Sie Platz, bitte. Womit kann ich Ihnen dienen, Herr Oberleutnant? Möchten Sie essen? Weder hat mir etwas angeboten, noch hat man mich mit Respekt behandelt. So etwas tun wir nicht mit unseren Kriegsgefangenen. Das glaube ich ja. Es tut mir sehr leid, dass Sie missbehandelt wurden. Besonders so ein ausgezeichneter Soldat wie Sie. Ich werde selbst dafür sorgen, dass die Schuldigen bestraft werden. Erst Herr Oberleutnant, muss ich nur ein paar Fragen stellen, dann können wir essen. Zigaretten? Danke sehr. Nun, Herr Oberleutnant, wir werden das rasch erledigen. Sie gehören dem äh, Kampfgeschwader 76 an, nicht wahr? Das habe ich nicht gesagt. Das brauchen Sie nicht zu sagen. Das weiß ich schon. Ihre Abteilung ist ausgezeichnet. Sagen Sie mir, der Oberleutnant Wedler, der am letzten April abgeschossen wurde, ist er ein Verwandter von Ihnen? Ja, mein Bruder. Aber woher wissen Sie das? Wir wissen viel, Herr Oberleutnant. Zum Beispiel, dass Sie einen Junkers 52 in Russland geflogen haben. Auch, dass Ihr Flughorst in Rouen liegt, wo Ihr Kampfgeschwader 76 mit einer neuen Staffel Heinkels 177 arbeitet. Das stimmt nicht. Was stimmt nicht? Dass wir in Rouen sind. So? Aber es stimmt doch, dass Sie in Russland waren und dass Sie jetzt den neuen Heinkel benutzen. Ich habe nichts zu sagen. Sie haben vollkommen recht. Ich will nicht, dass Sie etwas fragen. Obwohl es ganz gleich ist. Meiner Meinung nach kämpfen Sie für eine verlorene Sache. Sie verlieren den Krieg. Das glauben Sie natürlich. Aber ich würde Ihnen gerne etwas zeigen, Herr Oberleutnant. Überzeugende Beweis der Anzahl von Flugzeugen, die Sie allein in der letzten Woche verloren haben. Ich nehme an, dass Sie von diesen Ziffern nicht wissen. Wir wissen mehr, als Sie glauben. Und trotz aller Verluste bleiben uns noch genug Flugzeuge übrig. Das würde ich nicht bestreiten. Sagen Sie mal, wo liegt Ihr Flughorst, wenn er nicht in Rouen liegt? In Trondheim. So, Trondheim. Um wie viel Uhr sind Sie heute Morgen abgeflogen? Um 8 Uhr. Um 8 Uhr. Halten Sie mich für einen Dummkopf? Sie sind um 9.50 Uhr abgeschossen. Ziemlich schnell für einen Junkers 88. Unmöglich sogar. Die Geschwindigkeit ist höchstens 450 Kilometer. Vielleicht sind wir etwas früher abgeflogen. Ja, und vielleicht ist Ihr Flughorst doch nicht mit Trondheim. Ich weiß zufällig, dass er in Ruhe liegt. Einer von Ihren Leuten hat es mir gesagt. Der Schwein redet. Er lügt. Nein, Sie lügen. Da hat das Genfer Vertrag haben wir das Recht, Sie zu verhören? Ihr Amerikaner, mit eurem Genfer Vertrag. Ich könnte den Vertrag vergessen und Sie einem unserer Alliierten übergeben. Den Engländern? Das wäre mir lieber. Nein, nicht den Engländern, Herr Leutnant. Den Polen. Das würden Sie nicht tun. Warum nicht? Natürlich, wenn Sie ein bisschen vernünftiger wären. Also gut. Juan war richtig. Dankeschön, Herr Oberleutnant. Nun, was den neuen Heikel anbelangt. A touchdown for our side. Schwartz caught his prisoner in a lie. But if he hadn't known the cruising speed of a Junkers 88, he could have been fooled. That's why it's so essential for your AIO to know all about enemy planes. Captain Schwartz started off by being friendly. It didn't pan out. Then he tried the often successful method of assuring a prisoner that his side was losing, and that failed too. However, by using the information he'd received from the sergeant, making Vedler think he knew more than he did, and finally threatening him with Polish reprisal, the prisoner broke down. Immediately, he makes his report, evaluating his information, namely stating what he thinks is true or false in the light of his estimate of the prisoner's character. Intelligence, in turn, will do its own evaluation and dissemination. All right, let's leave the captain to his work and look in at another AIO. Vi darò indietro la vostra roba, appena rispondete a qualche domanda d'uso. Vi sarò grato. L'avete scampato per miracolo, sergente. Eh, sono stato fortunato. Credete nell'astrologia? Hitler crede nell'astrologia, ma non io. E gli altri tedeschi alla vostra base? 
Non so cosa credono, non me ne importa. Ah, oh, mi pare che neanche a voi piacciono i tedeschi. Adoperano gli italiani come schiavi, scavando la terra per loro. Scavando? Sì, impianti di difesa. Sì, sicuro, impianti di difesa. Uh, dite, sergente, da quanti anni siete aviatore? In dieci, dodici anni. Prima ero corridore automobilista a Milano. Corridore? Io sono un entusiasta di corsi d'automobile. Avete mai sentito parlare di Ralph di Palma? Oh, sì, è italiano, compare di mio padre. Davvero? Come mai con la vostra esperienza siete appena sergente? Eh, vorrei saperlo anch'io. Peccato. Certi vostri ufficiali non sanno chi abbia del merito. Dite, sergente, questi impianti di difesa, che cosa difendono precisamente? Oh, questa è un'informazione militare, non la posso dare. No, certo. Siete stato mai in America? No, mai. Gran paese l'America. Vi piacerebbe. Specialmente Providence, Rhode Island. Avete letto la mia lettera? Non vi posso nascondere nulla. Sì, ho letto la vostra lettera. Deve essere un bravo uomo, vostro zio. Oh sì, proprio un bravo uomo. Peccato che lo debba denunciare all'FBI. FBI? Che cos'è? La polizia segreta americana. Oh, come la Gestapo tedesca? No, non esattamente, però... E perché dovreste far ciò? Vostro zio ed altri come lui vivono in America e mandano denaro qui. Aiutano il nostro nemico. Se siamo stati indulgenti finora, oggi non lo saremo più. No, il denaro lo mandava a mia madre e sua sorella, ma non più. Lo mandava ad essa e adesso lo dava al partito fascista. No, no, non l'ha mai dato, mai, credetemi. E chi lo sa? Se l'ho denunziata lo arresteranno. Mia madre non riceverà più denaro e... Ne manda tuttora, eh? No, no, da mesi non ne manda. Vi scongiuro, non l'ho denunziata la vostra Gestapo. E se dimenticassi di farlo? Vi dirò tutto. Degli impianti di difesa del nuovo aerodromo, della missione del mio volo, del... Uno alla volta, sergente, uno alla volta. No, se The captain se played se his cards well. The Italian hatred of the Nazis, mutual interest in motor racing, the injustice of his not being more than a sergeant, encouraging the universal gripe about lack of promotion. You'll notice, too, that when he met resistance, he changed the subject, then came back to it. And finally, his ace card, Uncle Mario. That's where a careful study of the documents found on a prisoner is so invaluable. Well, time to leave the Italian arena and head east. This Jap pilot just bailed out of a smashed zero. しかし、お国の名をあれは亀を剣ヶ崎洋一の名を、そして、あんたが無事でおることを、あ、お家へ土地しましょう。いえ。どうか。お願いです。やめてください。そして、お母さんが喜ぶでしょ。いえ。どうか。どうかよしてください。亀を怪我しますから。私は死んだ方がいいんです。
、二ちともおっしゃったらいかがですか何も国に対して恥ずかしいようなことを願いませんそしてまた他の戦友たちは助かる機会もあれましょうここでは内地よりもまたあなたの基地や南海市よりも豊富な生活ができますよ南海市は基地でしたねはい南海市が基地でしたそうですねそれからねちょっと少し質問がありますあなたの基地はい。And this man, as good an American as you are, is planted here to pose as a fellow prisoner of war. The first AIO who tackled this pilot couldn't even get to first base, so he decided to use the indirect method through this second AIO. It seems to be working, too. Hospitals are good places in which to share confidences. Another good place is this. This man was told that a contagious disease was floating around and prisoners had to be quarantined. For three days, he's been kept in a dark room without company or reading matter or entertainment of any kind. Now he's being let out for exercise with a few fellow prisoners, among them an AIO using the indirect method of interrogation. After three days of being penned up alone, this Italian feels like talking, especially to a supposedly disgruntled Nazi who shows contempt for the Nazi cause. A few kind words about how badly the Italians have been treated by their German allies, and our Italian officer is only too ready to confide in him. There's no masquerading here, just a convivial evening. You think so. This is work, loosening a prisoner's tongue, entertaining him with fellow pilots who, by prearrangement, will soon start boasting about their exploits and experiences, and it won't be long before Jerry tries to top them. And then this AIO will prove an interested listener. Hospital, quarantine station, dinner party. These aren't the only locales for indirect interrogation. You may dream up a better one. Every day on all our fighting fronts, these man to man contests are taking place. The advantage lies with the interrogator, but he has to know how to use it. Every prisoner presents a different problem. But Jack or German. Or Italian. All are human underneath. Our interrogator's job is to play upon those weaknesses, to dig out the important information of the enemy's situation and capabilities, to help make up the complete intelligence picture. On this depends every vital action from here to victory.